Bill Gates, founder of Microsoft. He said, DNA is like a software program, but it's much more complex than anything we've been able to design. Bill Gates has said that DNA is like a computer program, only much more complex than any we've been able to devise. And if you reflect on that even for a minute, it's a highly suggestive observation. It certainly is, as why would billionaire, non-believer, and founder of the largest transparently operated charitable foundation in the world be making statements supporting creationism? The answer is, of course, he wasn't. The quote is actually taken from the book The Road Ahead, from a passage where Gates is comparing how boring his biology teacher made the subject compared to his chemistry teacher, and the importance of having inspiring teachers. Yep, that's right. Both Kent Hovind, currently in jail for tax fraud, and the Discovery Institute, the intelligent design proponents who would not defend intelligent design under oath, have little problems in reconciling their literal biblical ethics with taking a line out of a passage where a guy is talking about the importance of good teachers to infer that they support intelligent design. This seems to be a pervasive pattern of behaviour amongst young earth creationists. Take, for instance, the Dover trial of 2005, where intelligent design suffered a humiliating rout in court. Take the devout Christians and young earth creationists, Bill Buckingham and Alan Bonsell, who were instrumental in getting the Dover school board to teach intelligent design. A quick summary of their role in the affair. After Bill Buckingham and Alan Bonsell, at the time both school board members, had got the intelligent design proposal through the school committee, 60 creationist textbooks had conveniently showed up at the school, and so the trial lawyers wanted to know the origin of these books. Both Buckingham and Bonsell had sworn in their depositions that they did not know who donated the 60 copies of Pandas to the high school. But by the time Buckingham took the witness stand, a different story emerged. Buckingham had gotten up in front of his church and asked them to donate money to buy these books. And they did. And then he wrote a check out of his own checking account for $850 and he gave it to Alan Bonsell. And Alan Bonsell for some reason gave the money to his father who went and bought the books and then they showed up. It's a pretty astonishing lie to tell. Under oath, no less, during a deposition. Bonsell told the same lie even though he had given the check to his father to buy the books during his deposition. He said, I have no idea where the money came from. None whatsoever. You know, they just <laughs> pleaded ignorance the entire time. Uh, in fact, this was during the trial, one of the more entertaining moments of the trial was that when Bonsell was on the witness stand, Judge Jones actually interrupted the cross-examination and took over the questioning himself on this issue and started asking him why didn't, in fact, he said to the attorneys, give me a copy of his deposition. And they brought a copy of Bonsell's deposition up there, and the judge opened it and said, you said this. You said you didn't know. Why didn't you say you got the check from Buckingham and you gave it to your father? It was almost like this weird feeling that, you know, when you've watched a nature show and you know that the gazelle's about to get it from the lion, you know, I remember actually thinking, oh, God, Judge Jones is going to kill Alan Bonsell. I don't, I can't look. And then Judge Jones, his face had gotten bright red at this point, and he goes, you tell me why you didn't say where that money came from to buy of pandas and people. And Alan Bonsall finally, under Judge Jones's grilling, started to get a little nervous, and he started flapping his hands, and he started stammering, and he completely had lost this self-assured composure that he had earlier. For Bonsall in that situation, to have a federal judge you know, on the stand, basically accuse you of perjury under oath. I suspect that Bonsell may have needed a change of underwear uh, at that point. I suspect he was a little shaken up by that. Jones recommended to the U.S. attorney that he investigate bringing perjury charges against Buckingham and Bonsell for lying under oath. The 139-page opinion ruled that intelligent design is not science. Finding it had been introduced for religious reasons, Judge Jones decided it was unconstitutional to teach intelligent design in Dover science classes. Both defendants and many of the leading proponents of intelligent design make a bedrock assumption which is utterly false. Their presupposition is that evolutionary theory is antithetical to a belief in the existence of a supreme being and to religion in general. 
To be sure, Darwin's theory of evolution is imperfect. However, the fact that a scientific theory cannot yet render an explanation on every point should not be used as a pretext to thrust an untestable alternative hypothesis grounded in religion into the science classroom or to misrepresent well-established scientific propositions. The citizens of the Dover area were poorly served by the members of the board who voted for the intelligent design policy. Citing what he called the breathtaking inanity of the school board's decision, he found that several members had lied to cover their tracks and disguise the real purpose behind the intelligent design policy. The crushing weight of the evidence indicates that the board set out to get creationism into science classrooms and uh, intelligent design was simply the vehicle that they utilized to, to do that. As they passed this, the, perhaps the funniest uh, statement of the trial came from school board member Heather Giese, who said, oh, we're not going to be sued. I have confidence in the district's lawyers. Problem with this was the district's lawyer had told them, you're going to get sued and you're going to lose. Had told them, do not pass this. And that statement became rather prophetic. Not only did they get sued, because they had ignored their own attorney's advice, their insurance policy was canceled. So all of the money that they ended up having to pay out for the plaintiff's fees in this case, they had to pay themselves. Their liability policy wouldn't cover it.